he will announce our class, our 2019 signing class. And uh, it's another exciting day in Bulldog football. Uh, we've got uh, somewhere between 10 and 12 guys uh, listed here. Uh, it was mostly a uh, filling the needs kind of year. We wanted to make sure that we uh, hit those spots that we thought were the, uh, were the big spots that we needed some help in. Uh, we took some offensive linemen. Uh, we took a couple of defensive guys, defensive line guys, both of them were line guys in general. And uh, then we took a couple of uh, quarterbacks and skill guys. But more than anything else, at this point, uh, you know, we think the majority of those football teams in place for the coming year. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of space. So those places that you see that we recruited guys for, you know, we've challenged all of those guys that you know, be ready to go. Uh, we think they're a high-level group of guys, and we're looking forward to seeing if we can help, if they can help us on this coming year. So, uh, we're excited about uh, uh, some of the places that they come from. Uh, I think we've got three Dutch Fork kids. Uh, we got a uh, offensive uh, lineman. Uh, we got a tight end. Uh, uh, the Jordan Springs kid, we think, might be one of our real top guys. He, He's a, he's a physical big tight end, a 6'3", six, 6'... Six. One of my guys said he was 6'4". I think he's somewhere about the 6'3", range, about 230, 240, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Uh, real physical guy. I think he might be uh, able to help us early in his career. Uh, we've got two Cameron Johnsons, if you can believe that. Has there ever been such a thing? I don't know if I've ever had a situation like that happen before. We've got a Cameron Johnson who has already gotten here, he transferred in from Georgia State. He's a wide receiver from over Calvin County from Orangeburg. And then we've got Cam Johnson, who is a offensive lineman from in Columbia, from Dutch Fork High School. And then we got Lawson Danley, uh, uh, our AD son. He's a defensive uh, specialist guy. Uh, linebacker, we think, going to be big enough to be maybe even a, a defensive end at one point. So those guys, you know, from that program, you know, we think really are top-level guys. Uh, the Godbo kid, we've got a uh, young man from over at Blackwood High School who we think is a, a, a good player. He's a defensive player. Patrick Godbo is his name. And then uh, uh, we've got an offensive line guy, too, also. We got we brought one out-of-state kid in from, out of, uh, from North Carolina, um, an uh, offensive tackle. Um, Dallas Ford is his name. And the reason, one of the funny things we had when we were here, his dad, some big Cowboys fan. So you can imagine when you name your child Dallas, you know how big a Cowboys fan you might be. But he's got like Cowboy stuff on all over the place. And we had a lot of fun with that family. Uh, looked like he's going to be a big, good looking offensive lineman for years to come, a 6'4, 270 pound guy, you know, who's really athletic. So we think we did a good job of hitting most of the needs that we got for this coming year, this 2019 football season. So we look forward to, you know, to getting those guys in here this summer and, uh, and at that point uh, seeing if they can give us some help this coming year. Still, still some needs with the line and also the defense, but you got two quarterbacks in and they're two they're really athletic, can run and throw. I mean, how, how key was that just to, to get those two? And they're, they're two that have uh, played a lot in high school ball here in the state and done exactly a lot of Exactly right. Uh, Avery McCall, I think everybody knows that name. Over Dylan, we think is a uh, uh, special kind of guy. Uh, he's an older guy. We were really looking to put, if we put a quarterback in that group, a guy that could could maybe really get in there and give us some help immediately. Uh, we like uh, Tyrese Nick and what he brings to the table. Our offense is actually designed around his skill set, but at the same time, you know, when you get a chance to get your hands on a guy like that, you gotta jump at it. So that's kind of what we did. Uh, Avery's got some work to do. Uh, we would have liked to have had him in this uh, second semester right now, but you know, it was one of those kind of deals where he needed to go back and do some work to get all of his uh, uh, academics straight. Uh, if he can make that happen, then he'll be here this summer at that point, and uh, you know, then we'll see what happens. Coach, you talk about this was an East class, get four offensive linemen, and Look at how last year went. You guys were able to, you know, establish the run a little bit at time, mm -hmm. player of the year. But the big thing was, you know, sure enough, the offensive line to give guys like Nick time and let their offense develop, especially under um, junior coach and Ed Goddard. I think that's, uh, you know, always the most important part of a football team. Uh, the offensive line group is, 
if you're going to have a chance to be decent on offense, it's going to be a, a group that's got to be, you know, pretty good as far as numbers and, and, and ability. Um, we've got some guys, you know, who have started to develop and be decent up players. But, you know, at the same time with the losses that we had in that group, we lost uh, Robbie Stevenson, you know, was the main one we lost out of that group. We, you know, got another guy, too, that's kind of banged up. We're hoping that, you know, we can get Malik Mickle back for the health and ready to go for the spring. But, you know, we've got some guys banged up there. You know, we thought that we really needed to put a couple guys in there. We needed a little more size, a little more athleticism. We're looking to upgrade some, you know, at that position. We didn't feel like we were quite strong enough up front and we want to be the point where we you know, could be a little more hard-nosed as our offensive approach in, in some areas and uh, you know that's why we're going after those guys trying to beef up something in a way where we can be a little bit better one attack that way. Given how the early signing period went and kind of look at this class as a mm -hmm. total, I guess how, how, how more encouraged are you going into you know, this year again you know, getting that new coaching staff to develop and gel more, and now you guys got another class coming in. Well, um, I think you you think the sky's the limit for these guys. Um, you're exactly right. We've never been much of a early signing period kind of outfit. We've always kind of laid back a little bit to, you know, see how it sorts out in a way where we can get the highest level of guy that we possibly can. You know, I can tell you that the guys that we signed here, you know, were still in the – you know, big time uh, uh, college recruiting kind of process at that point. You know, they were thinking they were going to possibly be at some of the larger schools in the state. And, you know, as they got through this process, you know, they come on and, and, and decide that they want to play for South Carolina State. Well, you know, with the relationship that we got a chance to build once we started it and signed early, you know, it really gave us a chance to really build that relationship in a way that we got a chance to get these guys in here. So that's kind of our style. You know, it's been that way. You know, we're a little bit of an underdog style kind of mentality that way. You know, we think that we get these guys and, and we can see sometimes, you know, when we build a relationship with them, you know, what kind of, you know, it, interest, intestinal fortitude and that kind of stuff these guys seem to have, you know, what kind of fight they got in them, what kind of bite they got in them. So in those particular cases, we think that those guys – you know, can come in and give us some help. That's that's just how we do it. So this is a typical group for us, except for it's a smaller group than we've had last year. I got our last year signing class here. You know, we signed 22 kids last year. This is the exact same deal. And of those 22 kids we signed, you know, 17 of those kids, you know, were on our team and, were, and, and, and made some kind of uh, contribution last year. It's a little bit of unusual. Kind of deal, but that's why our class is so small this year because we had such a large class last mm -hmm. year. And with that being the case, you know, we think that this group is going to be uh, uh, just those particular needs as opposed to just kind of a, you know, whatever's available kind of a class. How much does that help the entire coaching staff knowing there's a lot of continuity from last season to this season? You don't have a lot of holes to fill and all that. <sighs> I think a bunch. You know, that means our spring practice should be very similar to what our fall practice ought to be. Um, you go out in the mornings now, we've got our off-season conditioning going now pretty much full speed. And uh, I was out this morning at 6 for a while, and we had, you know, 80, 85 kids out there running around. I uh, know that there are a couple walk-ons, that kind of stuff out there, but that's still a large number for this time of year. Most times we'd be somewhere in the, in the, in the high 60s, low 70s. So, you know, with that size group of guys in spring ball, that makes for, you know, the ability to do things a lot better. So, you know, we think that we've got a chance to be, you know, a lot farther along that way this coming spring as opposed to previous springs. But sometimes you have to do a lot of half-line drills because you don't have enough of certain, certain positions, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'd be excited about the fact that we seem to have most of the pieces in place for the coming year. And that'll give us a chance to get just that much more work, you know, going into the spring and into the fall that way. He's got, these guys got signed today. How's everything going with your contract? Is it signed? Is it not? Is it still being negotiated? Still, you know what? You know, it's pretty much done. At least I think it is. <laughs> That's kind of that deal that those guys do uh, between uh, uh, councils and all that kind of stuff. So, you know what? I hadn't even thought about that much, but I can tell you that I'm still working. So, 
you know, in that case, you know, that seems to be all I need. I get up in the morning and, you know, my car just kind of comes in this direction. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. I'm excited every day to get here. It's a lot of fun coming to work here. Uh, I got to ask you about, about Lawson. Um, the Dan, you know, the, yeah, Dan, he's coming uh -huh. on. I guess, you know, that'll be an interesting storyline. I guess, how much did you get to see of Dawson this year? I mean, of course, you and Stacey were talking a lot. Yeah. So how much did you get to see I've been watching him watching for the last year and a half, I guess, uh, Stacy, uh, Mr. Danley, uh, my boss, that has been here now for about, what, going on two years two, now? Two, yeah. And, uh, you know, he comes in here with three good-looking boys. He's got two other boys back behind Dawson that are, you know, pretty good athletes also. And uh, if you look at Stacy himself, Danley himself, you can tell you know, what kind of player he was when he was down at Auburn. You know, this guy's a chip off the old block that way, except for the fact that he's not a running back. And we don't know exactly what he's going to be, but we know he can run. He's got some bite to him. We think he may be, you know, a linebacker, defensive end kind of guy, maybe rush on third downs. But at the same time, you know, we bring those kind of guys in and we kind of figure it out a little bit. We like to think that he'd be, you know, a, 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 a high level guy. And, uh, you know, that's one of the best things about having that relationship because I don't know if we would have gotten him you know, if it hadn't been for the relationship that we have here and the fact that his dad would enjoy being able to see his young man play as opposed to, and he trusts us, the fact that he thinks that we'll do a good job with his son.